This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Hi, guys. Welcome to another thrilling episode of Hawaii Food and Farmers series. I am Pomai Weigert, and I'm going to be your hostess with the mostest today. I uh, am very excited because I am all by myself, uh, which is, you know, thrilling. And my guest today is someone who's going to talk to us about one of my favorite subjects, which is pork. And not just any pork, but pono pork. So I would, everyone, please join me in welcoming Bob McGee from Pono Pork. Hi, Bob. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to be here, excited. Mm -hmm. So, Bob, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about your pork and why it's pono and what you're doing? Okay, uh, so uh, we started bringing the pork to market uh, a couple years ago based on a few uh, a few premises, which is with this. Number one, I didn't want to be in the pork business. Oh. So that was really important to me was uh, I wanted to avoid in any way being in the pork <laughs> business. So we started Pono Pork with that premise. Okay. Uh, the idea being this, uh, the pigs were being raised in a very special way, which we thought uh, was very appropriate to be raised in Hawaii. Uh, we have a lot of food security issues and we have a lot of space issues. So the pigs were being raised in a way that uh, um, is very kind to the state of Hawaii, is very kind to the soil, is very kind to the tilth of, uh, of the land that we uh, live on here. So for that reason, um, it was time to go to market with these pigs. I was using them uh, and I was pretty much the only one using them. Uh, when my farmer David decided that we could do more and that we could kind of grow exponentially with time, uh, we started a pork business. Oh, uh, how long ago was that? Uh, March 22nd, two years ago, so less than two years. Oh, wow, wow. Uh, how's business been? Business is, uh, <laughs> so okay, business is, is truly uh, organic. It really is. It is, uh, it is not what you think it is. Mm -hmm. uh, and and, and uh, the end game is, 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 is nowhere close to what I thought it would be, but it's good. So it's slow, it's gradual, which I think is the best, best way to build a foundation. Definitely, business, so. especially for like a small startup business. Uh, as we're heading into the new year, uh, can you maybe share with us uh, one triumph you had last year and maybe one challenge? Uh, <laughs> I like to throw those in there uh, from 2017 that that you're kind of using as a, uh, a springboard going into uh, this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, I guess... Um, well, the biggest triumph will be actually will be realized this year. So okay. that's great. That's, that's a great question. Is that we're going to uh, be retail available? Oh, so, okay. So that's huge. And uh, you know, up to now, we were I was a wholesale distributor of pork. So um, we worked with restaurants. We worked with hotels, restaurants, industries. So um, if you were buying big pieces or whole pigs, we were your supplier of antibiotic-free, hormone-free. Uh, Completely vegetarian-fed pork. So we were, we were, the, we are the only distributor of really, really, really super clean, uh, super beyond awesome. organic, okay. wonderful, you know, that kind of pig. So because of that, um, we were able to go into retail, and that's a huge triumph for us. So uh, the, our margin is much better. Yeah. Uh, our potential for long-term success is much better with yeah, retail. Definitely. So, yeah. Definitely challenge. Uh, challenge is just the same. Uh, challenge is really. Uh, it's a whole different market. Uh, everybody in the uh, everybody in the livestock industry and everybody in the meat industry has told me across the board, do not go retail. Avoid retail really? if possible. Yeah, absolutely. So there's so much work. Really? Because once you go to a human being instead of a group of human beings, it's so much more it's it's so much more needy. Right. I mean, it's, it, true. It, we, true, yeah. it's not the, maybe the, the prettiest work to use. A lot more, which stuff. is yeah, which is great. Which gives us opportunity to provide more stuff, and it's a great thing for vigor and for health of the market. But I'm one guy, and yeah. my wife and I are you know we're, we're working at it. But it's yeah, retail is a is a it's a big thing when you have a pig. Is it just you two? How many people are in your operation? Well, okay, so there. Okay, so let's let's move away from the farm and say okay. it's just me. My wife and I. So, um, so that's the business. But there's also, of course, the farmer. There's the farm. Yeah. There's yeah. And, and everything, the, the, the complexities of everything that goes on at Mountain View Farms, which is 
a, a, a big farm in Waianae, a very big oh, farm. Oh, okay, so that's where the farm is. Exactly. And uh, do they only do pigs, or do they do They do so stuff? much. Okay. Uh, yeah, and it's all Korean natural farming. Okay. So first of all, it's all it's all farming that's really, really, really good for the soil. And people are really loving that. Really, I feel like there's been a real strong movement for the, or a desire even for consumers on the retail end for yes. how things are grown and processed. People are fine. Well, okay, I guess the answer is, yeah, there's a demand for what I sell now as opposed to, um, there was not the demand necessarily mm -hmm. five years ago. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think there was. I, it yeah. wasn't available. Um, so things, if you follow trends in market and stuff, antibiotic-free was not a big deal three years ago even. Mm -hmm. But then again, 20 years ago, what did organic mean? Mm -hmm. So if we're looking at our, as our product is trying to bring something that's beyond organic, we try to stay ahead of the curve. It's mm -hmm. still pigs, yep. but we try to stay ahead of the curve. So That's it's, great. Um, just sort of a spinoff question. Uh, as someone who really likes pork, it's one of my favorite dishes, uh, if I ever see it on the menu, it's going to happen. Like, I'm always going to, I'm going to order it. Uh, what is your favorite uh, style of pork to eat? Oh, wow. Um, you know, it's funny because uh, my farmer, uh, my farmer is vegetarian. Oh. My farmer no longer, he, has, he doesn't eat pork. Uh, he raises oh. the finest pigs, right, on this island, but um, he doesn't. And so for me, it's, it's a tough cook because I have studied it all over. I like all types of pigs. I like all breeds of pigs, and I like all types of cooking. Um, <laughs> I like a big a pork adobo is, is, is always a safe answer for me. What about a, something weird? Like something what is weird. a weird, you know, because like spleen, uh, okay, a spleen. A spleen, 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 spleen. You can never get enough spleen. Yeah, um, tasty? Yeah, uh, irony. I big, mean, big irony, livery, okay, um, okay. depth of the body of the animal, deep, deep, deep within the, 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 the you know, where the heart the, is pumping blood through it. <laughs> tasty, wow. So how, um, how is that prepared? So, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, right, yeah. So, no, so, well, you know, but, well, spleen, uh, I would say, okay, in Italy it's often braised. Oh, in a flavorful okay. sauce, okay. and it could be just like a tripe in a, in a, in a red okay. sauce, right? Okay, okay, um, so it's feeling safe, it's feeling a little safer. And it's a thin piece, it's like kind of like a, it's like a thin livery type piece of meat, and so um, it braises down pretty easily. It also can be grilled. Oh. Um, it's one of those traditional things where bacon makes, seems to make anything that's from deep within the body, any yeah. of the ana uh, or offal or any of those types of... Bacon seems to be the answer. The so, key is so just you know, you'll have hashtag bonus. So yeah, exactly. So bacon and she, bacon and spleen sandwich is not. Oh, un, it's, oh so mix bacon yeah. with Yeah. So liver is great, but liver and bacon makes it okay. Or liver and onion. So yeah. So you know, there's a way to spoonful of sugar yeah. helps the or or spleen, bacon spleen go or down. Or bacon <laughs> spoonful of bacon. Yes. I feel like that's would be a good hashtag. We for like us that so, hashtag, for us yes. today. So what did you do this afternoon? Well, we talked about spleen. And bacon. And bacon. And bacon. OK, awesome. Um, jumping sort of all over the place. Uh, like, was this your dream? Like, how did you get into this? It's only been two years since we do, we've been doing pork, but... It's a nightmare. What, what, um, yeah. what, no, it, what were we doing before yeah. pork? Uh, we were cooking. Uh, oh. Yeah, cooking and butchering. So, okay. yeah, a uh, chef that wanted better product. That's it. That's the answer. Is that is the answer? Like you um, were the chef that wanted better products. Yeah, I, I had certain goals. I mean, I do a lot of uh, charcuterie oh, and curing yeah. of meats. So yeah, I'm so a lot of uh, sausage making, a lot of letting meats get old, um, and so doing that, you really, really want uh, a certain a certain product quality. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and it's just like fresh. It's just like uh, it's it's like poke, right? Oh, yes. I mean, you do you. You can chop anything up, but there's certain things you'd rather have over certain things. So, yes. so the answer is we were looking for the finest ingredients. And when my wife and I decided that in the future we wanted to do something very special with pork as a career, oh. as, a, as a when we grow old, um, <laughs> we needed to have the best, uh, uh, the best ingredients. Okay. So, um, and they weren't 100% where we needed them to be. So mm -hmm. we thought if we adopted this kind of program, maybe it'll, yeah. That was it. And then how did you find your farmer? Like, you know, because you were looking for obviously something specialized, uh, and then you went and found someone special. Yeah. How did you get connected with him? Yeah, um, small island, right? Of course. <laughs> uh, no, really. Um, it really is. And the truth is, it was an entirely huge island, and I couldn't find that guy. 
Yeah. And I couldn't find, and, and I really was looking for that what guy. What is his name again? Tell us. Uh, I, he would rather I didn't, oh, but the okay. farm is Mountain the View Farms. Yeah, 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 okay. He's so shy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um, I call he's him, Asian. I call he him Yoda. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> can <laughs> say, I can't. Uh, but, um, I yes, can say it. Yes, uh, but he's a, he's a brilliant man, and he raises, uh, yeah, he raises a lot of different uh, things uh, at Mountain View Farms. So uh, when, I, when I met this guy, um, and he had this great small pork program that he was willing to go forever for, yeah. um, based, based on this. He believes in a farming style that's a very important farming style. So, so he was committed to it, and I was committed to the pig part of it. So we said, are we both, and there we go. And, and that, was, that was it. So the pigs had to come to market, and nobody else wanted to do it. Yeah. So together we did it. Why do you think that nobody else wanted to do it? Was it just timing and spacing? I mean, I feel like trends in food are changing so fast and so quick. Yeah. The rise of the of the super cool, awesome chef that kind of, I mean, chefs were always cool, but I really feel like there's been a lot of social platforming for, for the food industry. I mean, even in Hawaii, you know, a, a lot of um, new chefs are, and new farmers are kind of like creeping into the scene. What do you think um, yeah. has changed to where Hawaii is ready? You know what? I think um, two things that, well, okay, I think both people have changed it. The groups of farmers and the groups of chefs, um, the groups of people that bring all those products to market, uh, everywhere in the sales persons, um, okay. everywhere in between. Uh, I think what's happened is just it's evolved. But one of the main things is, number one, chefs are willing to take chances and commit. Mm. Um, they're willing to uh, adjust their prices to bring uh, a, a, a product to market um, as opposed to saying, you know, that's just too expensive, I can't bring it to market. So for that reason, um, that's a big, big, big thing. Uh, chefs being willing to take chances. Um, diners demanding that chefs take chances. That's a big thing. So um, diners are paying with their, you know, they're voting with their dollar. Chefs are voting with their dollar. Um, and farmers are willing to take, I, I, I have a farmer buddy that um, he swears, he said, this is the best year ever, 2017, the best year ever. What did it for you? Was it, you know, was it, was it your accounting principles? Was it your soil? Was it sun chokes, Bob? Sun chokes. <laughs> I discovered sun chokes this year. Changed my life. Okay, well, you don't know what it's going to be. It's organic. Yeah. Yeah. You don't know what it's going to be. Right. All right, guys. Well, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back in a jiffy to talk a little bit more about pork. Aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea comes on every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join us. I like to bring in guests that talk about all types of things that come across the sea to Hawaii. Not just law, love, people, ideas, history. Please join us for Law Across the Sea. Aloha. Good afternoon. My name is Howard Wig. I am the proud host of Code Green, a program on Think Tech Hawaii. We show at 3 o'clock in the afternoon every other Monday. My guests are specialists both from here and the mainland on energy efficiency, which means you do more for less electricity and you're generally safer and more comfortable while you're keeping dollars in your pocket. Hi, welcome back to Hawaii Food and Farmer Series. I'm Pomai Weigert, and I am here with Bob McGee from Pono Pork. And we're pretty much just talking Pono Pork. We're just talking pork, the world, how to cook it, how to, oh, clean it. So you're a butcher. <laughs> yeah. How to clean it, Yeah, yes. you're a butcher. So uh, was that way, where did that start from? Your whole life, you were, a, how did that come uh, You know, from? yeah, actually, um, by default, yes, because I grew up in a small town in western New York, I know. I look local, uh, but I grew up in a small town in western New York, and there was a few businesses. One of them was Tom Walls. I miss you guys. Um, I know you're all watching this. Uh, <laughs> Tom Walls on 5 and 20, and there's only a few places to work, so there's only a few jobs in that restaurant. That restaurant, uh, you, your job was either you could sweep up the outside uh, grounds or you could grind beef for Bud Borman, the butcher. Um, oh, okay. And Bud Borman was a heck of a butcher, and he taught me a lot, mostly grinding burgers. 
um, okay. and tying roasts. So he would take a whole cow and turn it into nothing but burgers and roast beef because you had a roast beef sandwich on the menu and burgers. So this is back in the day when that was a thing, when when uh, there was a butcher on premise, right? Oh, you know okay. what I mean? Yes, yes, yes. An yes, actual like... guy who had an actual huge piece of something on it. And he would come in. And so to me, I don't know if that was a, a, a romance thing or anything, but it was really cool. And um, I could do that and nobody else could. So uh, I had that from uh, a very young age. And then as I went to all that goofing around in life, eventually it came back to where I was cooking and the butchery skills really made a big difference in my life. Yeah. So, so uh, before I even got to Hawaii, like in 09, um, yeah, it had, been it had been making a big comeback in my life. But here it really, yeah, it, it fits. It took yeah, off yeah, yeah, yeah. here. And uh, I don't know if we talked about this already, but uh, coming to Hawaii, how did... Uh, how did you make the decision to do that? Like, did you always just did you come here on a trip, or you knew someone here, or how did you mm, choose here? That's a great question. Mm. Oh my! Um, I didn't want to move to Hawaii. I didn't really want to oh, move to Hawaii oh. at all. <laughs> 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 um, my wife is a surfer. My wife. Oh, my wife surfs. Well. She shreds. She's an insanely uh, talented woman and a wonderful, 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 patient woman. Yeah. And she surfs. And when we sold our house in Oregon. Oh. Where she surfed and it was so cold. Yeah. Uh, she said we're moving to Hawaii, yeah. and I said no, we're not moving. She said we were, yes, and we, we did. Are. <laughs> and uh, and and I said well, okay, but I'm just going to flip burgers on the beach, and I'm not going to get crazy. I'm not going to start my own business. And I'm certainly not, not going to get involved. Yeah. I'm certainly not going to like this place when I oh my gosh. And I got here, and uh, a day later, I was on the west side, uh, just on the beach for the whole day, and uh, and I fell in love, and I uh, and then she came out months later. But the answer is I didn't want to move here, and uh, when I, shortly after I was here, I, I fell in love with all the farmers. I fell in love really with a couple places like uh, Mao Farms guys, yeah, right? Definitely. Of course. Yeah, I mean, who doesn't fall in love with them? Yeah, and uh, and and then back the, at the same time, Naked Cow, uh, the, the girls. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. And so there's a lot of people that were doing stuff here. Um, I wasn't crazy about the livestock. Oh. Oh. I wasn't. Um, I really wasn't crazy about all the different programs, and I was confused by them. And I couldn't find stuff for home and for restaurant that was wonderful. Yeah. And I couldn't find it in all the stores. So I decided back then that that was an important responsibility. Is even though I'm just a cook, it, it, you know, we got to find a way to get uh, everybody's got to be able to have the same stuff. It's got to be, you know, equal. It yeah. can't be just the the the, the four season chef. Or the you know whatever you You're want to pick. Trying to your, close the class divide between the, uh, livestock that people eat. <laughs> wow. Some cows yeah, go dishes. this way. Some cows go that ah, way. And, some and parts go this place. The truth is, some yeah. Parts go this place. Yeah, mm. it's a you know it's a small town and it's a you know there's only one slaughterhouse. So there's you know it's uh, the processing on this island is. There's only one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. About this whole island? So every, every um, yeah, so again, remember that we're a state like that I is... I that. Sorry. I just was like, wow, it's so, it's well, hard to swallow when you, you know, those things get evolve. it right away again. That could have been different 20 years ago, and it could have been different 40 years ago. So, um, yeah, so that's a thing. And if you look at it as being, like, truly local, the people that are growing, uh, you know, this is an important subject, but the people that are growing animals that eventually want to be meat... There's only one way to go through. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that being the case, it's a very, uh, it's a very tenuous relationship, right? Mm -hmm. So, right, right. Um, so if you're buying local and you're buying super local from this island, oh my God, you're making an incredible sacrifice, and we are grateful because it's huge. It's huge. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and other islands have different uh, um, things, and yeah, we, everybody has different issues. Go. Right, right, right. Exactly. Um, so the cool thing is that. Here we have a challenge that'll make us different from Kauai, from um, Big Island, from and so and they have theirs that'll make them different from us, and they all thrive because of it. So yeah. that's a really really big deal. Uh, can you talk to me a little bit about, or you know, give some thoughts on uh, the sort of like the meat producer community? Um, do you feel like it's Collaborative. It's getting more collaborative. It's sort of every man for themselves. We're kind. Of, I mean, you know, like we we don't have to discuss in detail, but you know, like how how is it um, working amongst other 
meat producers or retailers or wholesalers? Well, again, um, we we live in a we live in a super super uh, small community. Yeah. Um, and I'm so so grateful for that um, because of the because of the camaraderie. And there are no names that everybody doesn't know. Yeah. If they're in the industry, <laughs> yeah. so so it's it's a cool thing. Um, and you know, I have a couple uncles that have saved my life a couple times yeah, here that. For sure. uh, and that have that have made things happen that are just miraculous, and then, and and most of those things are things that they've been doing for a hundred years here, way before I got here. So um, uh, the truth of the matter is, uh, I'm not the best person to ask about how it's doing. I can tell you, I'm super grateful for where it is. Yeah. Super grateful. Um, the amount of uh, the amount of producers that are coming to market now, off island, but on, in state, that's a big deal because yeah. you know what we can't do. I mean. We're limited space here. Yes. That's a big program. Um, do you really want to? Do you really want to do grass-fed beef all over the whole island? You know, there, there, it's just you have to be realistic. Do you want animals that eat less, uh, take up less space? Do you want you know they eat differently? They have so, yeah. It's a it's a it's a neat dynamic that we have for livestock in the state of Hawaii. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's the thing. It's a really really. Colorful, creative dynamic that gives us <laughs> Colorful great opportunities. Yes. <laughs> that, is, yes. that is a perfect way, I think, to explain. Actually, you know, a lot of the industry that is uh, in Hawaii, but definitely the food and farming communities, um, really the tapestry is growing so much. I mean, there's so many new players. Uh, and like you were saying, uh, changing, sort of like also a changing of the guard. There's a lot of passing of the torch. Um, and not just via age, just, you know, it's, it's via people. It, absolutely. It's, it's through, um, it's, and it's not, you know, it's not just uh, groups. It's not just one group. It's not just one farming community. And people support uh, local farming in unique ways. So it's really nice to see places that are, um, you know, I'm a meat guy, right? But, mm. but if I don't know the whole community of, of what everybody's eating, then, the, you know, I'm kind of out of it pretty bad. Uh, mm. so, so I can tell you that the amount of people that are growing produce and the amount of things that are having value at it, which mm. is, to me is much more important because um, once we get this stuff grown, not everybody wants everything all the time. Not everybody wants all the parts of it. So what's going on in the value-added community, the, the, the producers, the after-grower producers, is incredibly inspiring right now. So um, from, you know, fermented, from, you know, w whether it be a kombucha to uh, just a dehydrated product, Hawaii is really, really killing it for made in Hawaii right now. They really, I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I, I feel like even, um, even with working with farmers and working with ag producers, the value added component is is really opening eyes and doors to be colorful and uh, creative. Are there do you folks make value added products now? Are you looking to go into that? What is your what is what avenues are you right, thinking? Right. Um, so yeah, that's a, it's okay. So um, I guess you have to say with with meat, with livestock, with pork, you you're always looking for an out because. Uh, <laughs> What, what, you're right. So one, once you're dealing, we we want to keep a uh, our product to be a fresh product as opposed to a fresh frozen or a frozen. Oh, because okay. once we once we freeze our product, which you can do, which you can like, you know, you can batch slaughter like 30 pigs, um, pack everything, freeze it, and it'll look like uh, like Costco. It'll look like yeah. everything will be, you know. The thing is, then you're immediately competing with Costco, and we don't want to do that. Yeah. We don't want to. That's like lo, that's your LCD, right? So right. we don't want to. We don't want to lowest count. What we want to do is. B, antibiotic-free, hormone-free, locally grown, so, so that people can see the full value of that, and that's what we're shooting for. Mm -hmm. So our value added is truly, yeah, everything that we're shooting for is trying to add as much value, starting with intrinsically something that's clean, healthy, and Hawaii. Right, something specialized, something that exactly. you can only get from this from this source. Yes, exactly, okay, yeah. Yeah, so. yeah, and I, I think that a lot of, a lot of businesses are, uh, especially small businesses in Hawaii, are going in that direction. Yeah. So we, yeah, we'll do down the line. You know, right now I have like a, any, uh, you know, certain things like, say, uh, ground pork. I can go right to a USDA sausage maker who turns my stuff, my recipes into my sausage based on my Got pork. It. But it's a USDA stamp because I don't have the facility to do that. Mm -hmm. So somebody does that for me. But it's a local family. Yeah. So we're able, again, so, you know, we, we're keeping, we're not shipping it to, you know, wherever um, mm -hmm. to get it done. It stays here. So that's, you know, the value added thing to us is ultimately we try to build it here. And sure, if we can get it off island, that would be great. If we can, if we can go international with it, that would be great. But really, um, 
uh, you know, f from the island for the island is kind of a you know ah, nice premise. from the so, island for the island. Another so. great hashtag. You're full of hashtags. You're full of something. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, what about where where can where can people find you? I know you've been doing uh, restaurants. I know that you're going to mm. start uh, going into the retail uh, retail direction. But is there? I know you mentioned um, having a connection with restaurants. Is it? Uh, have you found like? Direct business is, yeah, so is the route to go for it you? Is, um, for us, primarily wholesale, um, chefs right now, have, have they just bit into the pork. They just, it really meant a lot to them. And the fact that, I think maybe the fact that there's like, you know, a butcher behind it has meant a lot to them yeah. too. Um, so, so really we have a great niche um, and we bring a very, very unique product to that niche. So mm -hmm. we love it, but we also would love to have retail. Um, yeah, as much yeah. as, as much torture as it is, we would love to have that outlet because not everything sells all the time to everybody, and you always have to. In, in, if you're trying to constantly be growing, you always have to be looking, always you know looking yeah, for those for outlets. Sure. Retail is an awesome outlet, uh, margin wise. Mm -hmm. It is. Um, so you know we're gonna we're gonna. Cool. So the answer is Kakua Market starting about next week. Wow! So, wow! How yeah. timely is yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yes. Okay, yes. Kokua Market next week, and then a variety of restaurants that are that are around Oahu now. Is it only Oahu? Yeah, right now? Um, it, it is primarily Oahu yeah, right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. We try to yeah keep it on this island. It's mm -hmm. yeah. Right, and and it is a the um, I think you mentioned earlier that it is your dream to keep it small. I feel like that's a. Um, well, that's a growing. Also, I mean, I want to say like a growing trend, but. I also recommend that to people that are going into business, like try to do small first. Yeah, 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 and absolutely. And be awesome at that, and and get good at that, and um, and is that kind of the direction? So you're yeah, we would you want. Or? Well, we would. Yeah, we would like get getting awesome small is really important. <laughs> it really no, it really is because the, the truth is it's a system for us. It's really it's 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 pigs. It's, it just is. It just cuts and it's certain things and it's and so really it's it's a thing that you can manipulate and you can kind of do a lot with it. So yeah, we would like to keep it small. The program itself has a lot to do with food security, okay. has a lot to do with the 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 the, the, S, the sustainability and all that kind of stuff. So no, we want it. We want everybody to be doing what we're doing. We want it to be huge. I don't necessarily want to be doing all that, but yeah. I want you know Korean natural farming. It's it's an end also. So we are we are supporting all all types of uh, small business and and we want to yeah, do yeah. small business and we want other people to do small business. Yeah, yeah. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you uh, for this little adventure that we have uh, today at Hawaii Food and Farmers Series. Uh, if you want to find Bob on social media, his Instagram is at Pono Pork. H-I. 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 Uh, so you can see all of his cool pork pictures. Uh, and he will be at Kokua Market. Yeah, um, yeah, we should be in there. I, I'll get in trouble. Coming we should up. be in there, in the, yeah, like in a week. And then in I'll a, have notes up there. You can, I'll have my number up there so you can call me for yeah. special orders. So go, be great. go on the Instagram because you'll probably be posting something that he's there. There maybe. you go. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Thanks for joining us, everyone. We'll see you in a couple weeks. Aloha.